In this lesson, I want to go over an old TV effect for you, and let me show you what it looks like here. Okay, so we're going to make this effect in Motion 4 today. So on the disk, you're going to find a picture, and let me pull it up here. It's on my desktop, but it's on your disk. You're going to find a photo called Old TV, so you could follow along with this tutorial. I'm going to drag this in. You're going to see it appears in the Layers tab, just as we discussed in an earlier chapter. What we're going to do is zoom in to this TV, and we're going to have a screen going with the kind of bad TV flicker effect. And so what I want to do is hit Shift-Z, see my whole project. I'm going to close the Layers tab, Command-4. And I'm going to, first of all, match the background to the white background here with the picture. We're going to kind of cheat a little effect here. So if you right-click, Project Properties, which is Command-J, go to your background color, and hit the magnifying glass just to double check that we get the same white that's back here and make sure it's a white that's away from the drop shadow that's kind of around the TV and we're gonna make sure this is solid as well and hit OK there so it kinda matches the frame here the whole picture looks like one picture with the TV in the center and what I also wanna do is add a little reflection here on the bottom so we do this by creating that rectangle at the bottom like we also talked about make sure it's selected we don't need the outline, we just need the blue fill. Let's make sure that's white as well. I'm going to go to your transform tool, flip it up like a floor. Grab a side holding down shift, we're going to make it a little bigger. Put it right here for now. Let's go to the inspector. Let's go to your properties tab and make sure your project is in 3D because you're going to see there's no options for reflection or shadow. So Command-4, flip this switch to turn it into 3D. So there it pops up, there's reflections. Hit the reflection and you're going to see we have a reflection here. Now you just need to lower this down. You can use this green Y axis. There's your reflection. If we grab a camera here, we're going to zoom out a little bit, see the entire reflection. I'm going to shift that bigger. And now what I want to do is actually make the angle more correct. Let's put it up a little bit. Under Reflection tab in your inspector, you want to go to Reflectivity. And I'm going to lower it down a little bit. Blur fall off. I'm going to make the end distance a little closer. And maybe I'll turn the reflectivity a little bit up right there. But the end distance kind of faded out nicely. So there we have a cool effect. The next step to achieve this effect is to go to our project pane, make sure we have our TV selected, and we need to duplicate this. So we need to duplicate here by right clicking and hit duplicate. Make sure it's on the top, and what we're going to do is make a mask around this. So we're going to make a mask in the screen because we want to fill it in to our own image. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're masking out. And I'm gonna grab the first one, which is the Bezier mask. And we're gonna hit each corner and side. So you're gonna end up making, what is that? Eight points? Nine, really, because you're gonna connect the last dot. And there you go. So it looks really sharp with the edges here. But what you wanna do, and you can't really see the mask because this old TV, other image is on. But we need that on for a reference. So we're going to right click on each point and move down the Bezier handles so we can control what's going on. Let's hit N to turn off snapping. We don't want that messing up our points here. So go around for every single point and turn on smoothing and adjust the edges to your screen. You're seeing the effect is looking a little bit better. You can't really tell, but we're getting smooth edges here. So there, all our edges should be smooth. If we turn off the first TV picture that's behind the mask, you can see the nice image we have. That's going to be perfect for, for what we're doing. So now we want to fill the mask with something that we can use, like a picture. Now hit Shift-Z to see the entire project here. 
so we know what we're working with. And now what I want to do is on your training disc, you're also going to find another picture called girl in field photo. And I'm going to grab this here. And I'm going to drag this. And notice how I drag this into this old TV mask. I'm going to grab the photo. And if I put it over the TV copy, you want to scroll down a tiny bit. And you're going to see this little line with a dot at the end of it between the Bezier mask and the old TV copy. Drop it in right there in that little slot and you're gonna notice it fills in the picture frame perfectly. So if we go in, we can see the photo. It doesn't change, it's just a still photo. We can do the same with a video here. But what you wanna do is add the whole effect now. So go to your library, under filters, you're gonna see bad TV. This is the one we want. We're gonna drag this to the old TV copy. You're gonna notice it adds the effect, and there we go. Now what we do is just adjust the effect to what we want it to look like. You have the roll, which changes how much it goes up and down. The waviness, which changes the lines and how much they shift back and forth. You have the static, which as you can tell adds a little more static in each frame. And you have all the other variables here that you can play around with. Now it depends for each photo, but you're going to change the effect accordingly. This is just a little playing around, adjusting each little knob, and playing through. Now this is a pretty hardcore effect, so what you want to do is render, and you're going to hit Apple R or Command R to render out before you view everything. So now I'm going to take my camera, and we're going to animate it. And this is the last part of this tutorial. And we're going to grab the camera, drag it down a little bit so it's more centered with our image. Drag it right there, and let's back it up. Keep backing it up, and if you have trouble with what these tools are, go back to the earlier tutorials that we had on the disk, and start mastering these. And I'm going to hit record, and we're going to drag into about 75 frames, and zoom in the camera. I'm going to do it this way now. And then we lower the X and Y button and match it into frame. And it should be good about there, up a tiny bit. There we go. And then we can render this out, hitting Command R, and then view the effect. And here's a nice looking effect. You can use this for a lot of different things, put in video or text.